Chapter 14 All the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night. All the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron, and the whole congregation said to them, Would that we had died in the land of Egypt, or would that we had died in this wilderness! Why does the Lord bring us to this land to fall by the sword? Our wives and our little ones will be a prey. Wouldn't it be better for us to return to Egypt? They said one to another, Let's make a captain, and let us return to Egypt. Then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel, Joshua the son of Nun, and Caleb the son of Jephunneh, who were of those who spied out the land, tore their clothes. And they spoke to all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we pass through to spy it out is an exceedingly good land. If the Lord delights in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it to us, a land which flows with milk and honey. Only don't rebel against the Lord, neither fear the people of the land, for they are bread for us. Their defense is removed from over them, and the Lord is with us. Don't fear them. But all the congregation bade stone them with stones. The glory of the Lord appeared in the tent of meeting to all the children of Israel. The Lord said to Moses, How long will this people despise me? And how long will they not believe in me for all the signs which I have worked among them? I will strike them with the pestilence and disinherit them, and will make of you a nation greater and mightier than they. Moses said to the Lord, Then the Egyptians will hear it, for you brought up this people in your might from among them, and they will tell it to the inhabitants of this land. They have heard that you, O Lord, are in the midst of this people. For you, Lord, are seen face to face, and your cloud stands over them, and you go before them in a pillar of cloud by day, and in a pillar of fire by night. Now if you shall kill this people as one man, then the nations which have heard of the fame of you will speak, saying, Because the Lord was not able to bring this people into the land which he swore to them, therefore he has slain them in the wilderness. Now please let the power of the Lord be great, according as you have spoken, saying, The Lord is slow to anger, and abundant in loving kindness, forgiving iniquity and disobedience, and that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children, and on the third and on the fourth generation. Pardon, please, the iniquity of this people, according to the greatness of your loving kindness, and according as you have forgiven this people from Egypt even until now. The Lord said, I have pardoned according to your word, but in very deed as I live, and as all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord, because all those men who have seen my glory and my signs, which I worked in Egypt and in the wilderness, yet have tempted me these ten times and have not listened to my voice, surely they shall not see the land which I swore to their fathers, neither shall any of those who despised me see it, but my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit with him, and has followed me fully, him will I bring into the land into which he went, and his seed shall possess it. Now the Amalekite and the Canaanite dwell in the valley. Tamara, turn and get into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. The Lord spoke to Moses and to Aaron, saying, How long shall I bear with this evil congregation that murmur against me? I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel which they murmur against me. Tell them, As I live, says the Lord, Surely, as you have spoken in my ears, so will I do to you. Your dead body shall fall in this wilderness, and all who were numbered of you, according to your whole number from twenty years old and upward, who have murmured against me, surely you shall not come into the land, concerning which I swore that I would make you dwell therein, save Caleb the son of Jephunneh, and Joshua the son of Nun. But your little ones, that you said should be a prey, them will I bring in, and they shall know the land which you have rejected. But as for you, your dead body shall fall in this wilderness. Your children shall be wanderers in the wilderness forty years, and shall bear your prostitution, until your dead bodies be consumed in the wilderness. After the number of the days in which you spied out the land, even forty days, for every day a year shall you bear your iniquities, even forty years, and you shall know my alienation. I, the Lord, have spoken. Surely this will I do to all this evil congregation, who are gathered together against me. In this wilderness they shall be consumed, and there they shall die. The men whom Moses sent out to spy out the land who returned, and made all the congregation to murmur against him, by bringing up an evil report against the land, 
Even those men who did bring up an evil report of the land died by the plague before the Lord. But Joshua the son of Nun and Caleb the son of Jephunneh remained alive of those men who went to spy out the land. Moses told these words to all the children of Israel, and the people mourned greatly. They rose up early in the morning and got them up to the top of the mountain, saying, Behold, we are here, and will go up to the place which the Lord has promised us, for we have sinned. Moses said, Why now do you disobey the commandment of the Lord, seeing it shall not prosper? Don't go up, for the Lord is in among you, that you not be struck down before your enemies. For there the Amalekite and the Canaanite are before you, and you shall fall by the sword, because you are turned back from following the Lord. Therefore the Lord will not be with you. But they presumed to go up to the top of the mountain. Nevertheless, the ark of the covenant of the Lord and Moses didn't depart out of the camp. Then the Amalekite came down, and the Canaanite who lived in that mountain, and struck them, and beat them down even to Hormah. Psalm 50 A Psalm by Asaph The Mighty One, God, Yahweh, speaks, and calls the earth from sunrise to sunset. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God shines forth. Our God comes and does not keep silent. A fire devours before Him. It is very tempestuous around Him. He calls to the heavens above, to the earth that He may judge His people. Gather my saints together to me, those who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. The heavens shall declare his righteousness, for God himself is judge. Hear, my people, and I will speak, Israel, and I will testify against you. I am God, your God. I don't rebuke you for your sacrifices. Your burnt offerings are continually before me. I have no need for a bull from your stall, nor male goats from your pens. For every animal of the forest is mine, and the cattle on a thousand hills. I know all the birds of the mountains, the wild animals of the field are mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the world is mine and all that is in it. Will I eat the flesh of bulls, or drink the blood of goats? Offer to God the sacrifice of thanksgiving, pay your vows to the Most High. Call on me in the day of trouble, I will deliver you, and you will honor me. But to the wicked, God says, What right do you have to declare my statutes, that you have taken my covenant on your lips, seeing you hate instruction and throw my words behind you? When you saw a thief, you consented with him and have participated with adulterers. You give your mouth to evil. You harness your tongue for deceit. You sit and speak against your brother. You slander your own mother's son. You have done these things, and I kept silent. You thought that the I am was just like you. I will rebuke you and accuse you in front of your eyes. Now consider this, you who forget God, lest I tear you into pieces and there be none to deliver. Whoever offers the sacrifice of thanksgiving glorifies me and prepares his way so that I will show God's salvation to him. Chapter 3 For behold, the Lord, the Lord of hosts, takes away from Jerusalem and from Judah supply and support, the whole supply of bread and the whole supply of water, the mighty man, the man of war, the judge, the prophet, the diviner, the elder, the captain of fifty, the honorable man, the counselor, the skilled craftsman, and the clever enchanter. I will give boys to be their princes and children shall rule over them. The people will be oppressed, every one by another, and every one by his neighbor. The child will behave himself proudly against the old man, and the base against the honorable. Indeed a man shall take hold of his brother in the house of his father, saying, You have clothing, you be our ruler, and let this ruin be under your hand. And that day he will cry out, saying, I will not be a healer, 
for in my house is neither bread nor clothing, you shall not make me ruler of the people. For Jerusalem is ruined, and Judah is fallen, because their tongue and their doings are against the Lord, to provoke the eyes of his glory. The look of their faces testify against them. They parade their sin like Sodom. They don't hide it. Woe to their soul, for they have brought disaster upon themselves. Tell the righteous good, for they shall eat the fruit of their deeds. Woe to the wicked, disaster is upon them, for the deeds of his hands will be paid back to him. As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. My people, those who lead you cause you to err and destroy the way of your paths. The Lord stands up to contend, and stands to judge the peoples. The Lord will enter into judgment with the elders of His people, and their leaders. It is you who have eaten up the vineyard. The spoil of the poor is in your houses. Do you mean that you crush my people, and grind the face of the poor, says the Lord of hosts? Moreover, the Lord said, Because the daughters of Zion are haughty, and walk with outstretched necks and flirting eyes, walking to trip as they go, jingling ornaments on their feet. Therefore the Lord brings sores on the crown of the head of the women of Zion, and the Lord will make their scalps bald. In that day the Lord will take away the beauty of their anklets, the headbands, the crescent necklaces, the earrings, the bracelets, the veils, the headdresses, the ankle chains, the sashes, the perfume bottles, the charms, the signet rings, the nose rings, the fine robes, the capes, the cloaks, the purses, the hand mirrors, the fine linen garments, the tiaras, and the shawls. It shall happen that instead of sweet spices there shall be rottenness, instead of a belt, a rope, instead of well-set hair, baldness, instead of a robe, a girding of sackcloth, and branding instead of beauty. Your men shall fall by the sword, and your mighty men in the war. Her gate shall lament and mourn, and she shall be desolate, and sit on the ground. Chapter 4 Seven women shall take hold of one man in that day, saying, We will eat our own bread, and wear our own clothing, only let us be called by your name. Take away our reproach. In that day the Lord's branch will be beautiful and glorious, and the fruit of the land will be the beauty and glory of the survivors of Israel. It will happen that he who is left in Zion, and he who remains in Jerusalem shall be called holy even every one who is written among the living in Jerusalem, when the Lord shall have washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion, and shall have purged the blood of Jerusalem from its mist, by the spirit of justice, and by the spirit of burning. The Lord will create over the whole habitation of Mount Zion, and over her assemblies, a cloud and smoke by day, and the shining of a flaming fire by night, for over all the glory will be a canopy. There will be a pavilion for a shade in the daytime from the heat, and for a refuge and for a shelter from storm and from rain. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, proof of things not seen. For by this the elders obtain testimony. By faith we understand that the universe has been framed by the word of God, so that what is seen has not been made out of things which are visible. By faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he had testimony given to him that he was righteous, God bearing witness with respect to his gifts, and through it he, being dead, still speaks. By faith, Enoch was taken away, so that he wouldn't see death, and he was not found because God translated him. For he had this testimony given to him, that before his translation he had been well-pleasing to God. Without faith it is impossible to be well-pleasing to him. For he who comes to God must believe that he exists, and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. By faith Noah, being warned about things not yet seen, moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his house. 
through which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is according to faith. By faith Abraham, when he was called, obeyed to go out to the place which he was to receive for an inheritance. He went out not knowing where he went. By faith he lived as an alien in the land of promise, as in a land not his own, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for the city which has the foundations, whose builder and maker is God. By faith even Sarah herself received power to conceive, and she bore a child when she was past age, since she counted him faithful who had promised. Therefore as many as the stars of the sky in multitude, and as innumerable as the sand which is by the seashore, were fathered by one man, and him as good as dead. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them and embraced them from afar, and having confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For those who say such things make it clear that they are seeking after a country of their own. If indeed they had been thinking of that country from which they went out, they would have had enough time to return. But now they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore God is not ashamed of them to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. By faith Abraham, being tested, offered up Isaac. Yes, he who had gladly received the promises was offering up his one and only son even he to whom it was said, In Isaac will your seed be called, accounting that God is able to raise up even from the dead. Figuratively speaking, he also did receive him back from the dead. By faith Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau, even concerning things to come. By faith Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each one of the sons of Joseph and worshipped, leaning on the top of his staff. By faith Joseph, when his end was near, made mention of the departure of the children of Israel and gave instructions concerning his bones. By faith Moses, when he was born, was hidden for three months by his parents, because they saw that he was a beautiful child, and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. By faith Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to share ill treatment with God's people than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a time, accounting the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures of Egypt, for he looked to the reward. By faith he left Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. By faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of the blood that the destroyer of the firstborn should not touch them. By faith they passed through the Red Sea as on dry land. When the Egyptians tried to do so, they were swallowed up. By faith the walls of Jericho fell down after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith Rahab the prostitute did not perish with those who were disobedient, having received the spies in peace. What more shall I say? For the time would fail me if I told of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, worked out righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the power of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, from weakness were made strong, grew mighty in war, and turned to flight armies of aliens. Women received their dead by resurrection. Others were tortured, not accepting their deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection. Others were tried by mocking and scourging, yes, moreover, by bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn apart, they were tempted, they were slain with the sword. They went around in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, ill-treated, of whom the world was not worthy, wandering in deserts, mountains, caves, and the holes of the earth. These all, having had testimony given to them, through their faith, didn't receive the promise. God, having provided some better thing concerning us, so that apart from us they should not be made perfect.